on today's episode of Cheating When Love Lies. This week, it's part two of the Cheating When Love Lies holiday retrospective. Last week, we heard some of the most poignant moments from Cheating When Love Lies episodes. And this week, I thought it would be a great idea to continue that. I just so loved going through all of the episodes of 2021 and listening to how frank and vulnerable people were about their own personal lives and their stories. I was so incredibly humbled by people's sincerity and their honesty about moments in their lives that they weren't necessarily proud of or things that they had never, ever shared with anyone ever before. I learned by listening to the episodes that cheating when love lies isn't only about affairs. It's about love and relationships. Whether it's John in episode 9 who talks about how he refuses to have a relationship with a woman that has a pet because he feels like he's been emotionally abused by women who prefer their pets to him. Clark. Who can't forget Clark? Clark came off as the most arrogant cheater womanizer anyone could ever imagine. And I don't think that many people can deny that by the end of his interview, we really saw a different side of the man who was a stereotypical playboy. We saw the humanity in Clark. We saw that although we can't excuse it, we understood that his behavior was driven by sadness and loneliness. Mark Simone, episode 12. Everybody knows Mark. He's got the number one radio show in New York. Mark was hilarious and such a great storyteller. He told stories about billionaires and zillionaires who even knew there were zillionaires. I guess that's a whole new category now about how they cheat. And it's a whole other level than meeting somebody at the hotel room down the street. Adam Carolla, I loved having Adam on the show. He's hilarious and no one does a better job at finding these examples in real life to help illustrate the point he's trying to make. He is the best at that. And we even did a little role play where he and I were a fictitious couple for about a minute and a half to illustrate why someone may consider having an affair. These are just some of the stories that I was able to review in coming up with this retrospective for you. But in each and every case, I was always humbled by people's sincerity, people's honesty, and people's willingness to be introspective about their betrayals, about their mistakes, and about how sometimes they were willing to accept being victimized by an affair because they just didn't know what else to do. So join me as we continue this week to revisit the best of cheating when love lies. Episode three with Clark. So Clark is a self-described really good-looking guy. I think a lot of listeners had a very visceral response to his own self-perception, but it's true. I mean, Clark is in his real name. He's in the studio. He's a great-looking guy. He's very virile and that he's a, you know, really adept with picking up women, which he does. He finds these lovers of his at gyms. And at the time that we spoke, I think he had about seven or eight different married women whom he had had affairs with at these, uh, you know, exercise facilities. It's that real typical image of the macho, good-looking guy picking up the babes. But I had to peel back that onion. I had to peel it back and try and find out how does this man really feel about having so many lovers who are married while he's married. At some point, guys in his 40s, isn't it hurtful? Isn't it debilitating? I hear half the guys out there going, no way, Jillian, you're missing the whole point. It's fabulous. But in this guy's case, I suspected that there was something more. And towards the end of our interview, I really did understand that he was a lot more lonely and sad than one would have expected. But in this excerpt, I asked Clark, why do people cheat? According to you, you're a serial cheater. You should have a sense. Why do people cheat, Clark? Why do you cheat? 
And why do these women, these affluent women who are married to these, you know, very successful men, um, they live in beautiful homes, have kids, have all the trappings that one would imagine that one would want in life, why are they cheating? And this was his answer. In your opinion, why do these women who have it all risk having an affair and getting caught? What drives them to have an affair with you? Oh, I'll put it plainly. Just imagine you have everything you want in your life and you're still not happy. You have all the money. You have everything. You have a loving husband, the kids, and you're still not happy. And you don't know why you're not happy. So you have everything. Most people would kill for your life, these women, right? Mm-hmm. So they seek out something else and they try to find the happiness. I think that's pretty much what it comes down to. It's like a piece of uh, pie or something and, this, you know, they have 90% of it, but that one slice, you know, 10% is missing. So what about you? What are you hoping to get from the affair? Uh, for me, you know, it's, it's friendship. It's what, what I don't have for my wife, which I've really never had when things went sour between us, is a friendship, somebody you can talk to, somebody who's encouraging, someone who's loving, someone who's affectionate, you know, all the things that you don't have. Mm -hmm. More importantly, the material things mean zero. If you're not happy and you don't have a clear head, it doesn't mean anything. So to everything I don't have, you know, and I've had multiple affairs and, you know, they've become good friends and a part of my life for a long time. So in the episode with Clark, Clark talked about the fact that although he's had affairs with seven or eight different married women, two of whom were friends, by the way. They didn't find that out till much later, but they were friends and he was sleeping with them both pretty much at the same time. He talks about how none of these women ever wanted to leave him first, that he was always the lever. I found that interesting, kind of didn't believe it, but he said that that was the case, that he was always the one that would end it. And I was really struck by the way that he talked about controlling and manipulating these women's emotions. He would talk about them becoming, quote, irrational and I crazy. How do you describe these lovers of yours in that way? But he was very, very explicit in the way that he described that he can control and manipulate these women when he felt that they weren't behaving in a way that would allow the affair to continue. Take a listen to what he said. You're, Why do you think that no one with eight different women mm -hmm. who are married, yeah. that no one ever said to you, even whether it was verbalized, articulated by their actions, I don't want to do this anymore? You don't find that surprising uh, or do you? No, I mean, look, they, they they may say it, you know, one day, then the next day they'll text you like nothing is wrong. So, Aha, so someone has articulated that yeah, at some point. They've articulated it, but I mean, it doesn't last. It's like a flash in the pan, you know, so they'll act a certain way. They'll be upset. Then you just pull back. So you're saying that they're going to cut you off, but they don't really mean it. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Uh, <laughs> How do you know? Because, you know, they always, you know, kind of circle back around or sometimes, you know, like, look, let them calm down, wait, wait, you know, maybe a week or so to reach out to them. They know that I'm there for them emotionally. I think that's why they don't end because I'm, I'm a friend. I'm, as a friend to one of these women, yeah. would there ever be a time as their friend that you would look down on your relationship with them and say, I'm your friend and what you're doing with me here really isn't in your best interest? I've actually, I, I've said that. I'm like, look, you know, maybe this isn't right for you right now. Like, you know, and here's the other thing too. If you're with someone physically, you can kind of gauge when, when they're going to flip on you. So <laughs> for hmm. example, you know, when things are good or things are bad, or if you're with them, you know, you're with them physically, you have that level of intimacy and then they start acting irrational time and time again after that, then I would say to them, look, why don't we just, why don't we not do this? Like, we don't need to do this. I'm your friend. I'm here for you. So that's usually what I do. And now? A word from our sponsor. CBDX.com. They went all in on Delta 8 THC because they realized, just like a lot of you, that when CBD came out, uh, it really wasn't like cannabis the way you know it and love it. CBDX.com. Prepare to have your mind blown because this is a federally legal form of THC and you're absolutely, totally going to feel it. So they've got Tasty Flower, which is just like cannabis that you know and love. They've got discreet vape cartridges that are strong, potent gummies, and even pure concentrates. You are going to feel it when you use these products. 
So never drive or operate heavy machinery when you're using these products. And, and they will show up as THC if you take a drug test. If you live in a state where cannabis is legal, this is a lot easier than getting in the car, driving to the dispensary, and it's cheaper, less taxes. And if you live in a state where cannabis is not legal, this is such a no-brainer. Forget trying to find some sketchy, behind-the-wall, weird way of getting what you want. Do it legally and easily because these products are shipped directly to your door. So go to CBDX.com, that's four letters, CBDX, and use the code CHEATING. You'll get 20% off and a free gift. That's CBDX.com, code CHEATING, and you'll get 20% off and a free gift. Try it. It works. Episode four, called The Blaming of the Shrew. It's a short fictional story that I had written about an affair And basically, it's the guy, he's married, the woman, she's married, they come together, they have this, you know, torrid emotional slash physical affair for reasons that he explains he's very unhappy at home. We don't really know why she's doing it. It ends on a rather sad note when the woman who's married and having the affair realizes, well, he and I are never going to be together. I'm never going to have my lover for my own. And so this is the way life goes. But the story is very interesting because you hear the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations of what it is for two married people to be having an affair. So after the story, after the blaming of the shrew, we had the round table with my friends, Blake, Ina, and Alyssa, each coming from very different, diverse walks of life. And Blake admits and talks about an affair that he had He was with a girlfriend, a very serious girlfriend, and he had his side woman. Those are his words, not mine. He talks about why the secondary partner, this quote-unquote side woman, wasn't girlfriend material. Apparently, according to Blake, who qualifies himself as quote-unquote a classic man, felt like the secondary woman wasn't wife material because she couldn't cook or clean. So the woman you're sexting with could have been your girlfriend, but she wasn't because fill in the blank. Because um, she was not for me in times of I did not see her as girlfriend material. I understand. She was fun material, Oof. looked very pretty, Oof. could walk around, could model her. Yes. Oof. But could she cook? No. Could she clean up a house? Oh, no. Oh, you did not. No, no, you did not. No, no, not just no. Go there. no, no, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Take into consideration. <laughs> No, yeah. I am a wonderful cook. I could clean a house really well. Uh-huh. I was raised by a woman. Okay. No, understand that. You have it's... to understand that your first con- Alyssa respond to Blake. I mean, she's not wife material because she's not cooking and cleaning. Did I did no, I get that? I believe bec- no, I think we just stepped into like the time machine. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Women no, have come so far. No, I understand that. But it's like this. I am from a um I am Caribbean. Me being Caribbean, yes, I might have a classic way of thinking. We're in the Caribbean. Trinidad Trinidad. <laughs> okay. So um no, I, as I said, I was raised by a woman. My mom is a single woman who's great and she kills it. But there is a mother for a reason. There's a father for a reason. You understand? I do not expect, I expect certain things of a lady. I expect certain things of a man. That's just what it is, how but, I believe. Even like though we do share responsibilities. I mean, like, I expect a woman to be more nurturing and motherly and take care of so homey cooked, things. If she cooked, you would have considered right. If sex is, and if she cooks, the, that gives that she has more empathy. Have, 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 if you're always in a hotel room, uh, I mean, I, I, <laughs> that's what I want to know. I, I, I mean, I mean, as I said, she could have been my girlfriend before. So she clearly, already spent time at my house and. I have tasted it. I have I've tasted s- it. I've like Ooh, food. What does that mean? Her, her food. Her food. Her food. He said he didn't I have, touch her. I have seen. I have. No, no, no. I said before. This is before. Prior to my current relationship. Yeah. Oh. Hence the reason. Uh-huh. It was just a sexting phase, and I never pulled any triggers. How did you triggers. end it? How did I end it? Um, as we the word is ghosted, you disappear. You stop oh. talking. To- okay. In the roundtable, we had Blake, Ina, and Alyssa. And so Blake talks to us about his own circumstance where he was cheating. He had a girlfriend and then this lover whom he refers to as, quote, the side situation. And 
So he talks about how the side situation, his words again, not mine, does something for his birthday, which he deems unacceptable and, quote, crazy. And I got to say, it drives me crazy when men refer to women as crazy because they have behaviors that the men don't understand. Someone much, much smarter than I said something that I'm going to repeat to you, and I thought it was such a great explanation for why people call other people crazy. Most people have a coherent reason for why they behave the way they do. John McWhorter said it, not me. And I'm only repeating it because I thought, wow, he really got it. So in this case, Blake's side situation, his lover, did something for him on his birthday that he found absolutely unacceptable and crazy. And I just had to take him to task on that. Why are you calling this woman crazy? Here's what happened. I had, at a time when me and this girl was serious, I had a side, a side situation going on. Mm-hmm. I remember clearly it was my birthday. My side situation came into my apartment, cleaned my apartment, and left me a cake. Mm-hmm. Okay? When I came home from work, I threw out the cake and all the decorations she gave me <laughs> because <laughs> my girlfriend is coming home and this girl knows this. Mm-hmm. So why are you doing all of these madness? Why? Sounds but why like is a romantic that madness? comedy. Sounds like a movie. Why is you that madness? Because <laughs> Why is that madness and not just her sincere? Why is it madness? Why is it? It's, madness is a big old why It's critique. madness. Why, this is why it's madness. It's <laughs> madness because clearly you understand what the situation is. And so who establishes the boundaries of how much you can express your sentiment? Like Very who, true. Very true. But who if wrote I te- that rule book? Okay. So if in the beginning of the situation, mm-hmm. we have a conversation. Well, did you? It was your affair. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 I you will, told well, you, you well, can well, never well, bring a birthday cake to my house. No, I didn't say you can never bring a birthday cake to my house. It's just like a life. You can okay. never clean my apartment. But life is, is, this is what it is. life is messy. Life is messy. Life is messy. Not in his house. She's who cleaning follows the, house. the rules. But um, it's just a matter I but feel of. Um, he's not following the rules. I Why take umbrage at this notion of crazy. Women are always labeled as crazy because I feel like men don't have a vocabulary to express the nuances of different sentiments. I apologize about that. She was excessive in her um, attempts to making me happy. <laughs> oh, I think wow. she just wanted. That was wow. Eloquent. I think she Ooh. just wanted to make you happy. I think as women, we're nurturers. Was she crazy? Somebody no. answer this. No, I don't well, think she's crazy. Well, let me see. Crazy. I think she's crazy for wanting to clean somebody's apartment. <laughs> I mean, personally. That is. Right. Ina's a stand up comedian, so she's absolutely hilarious. And she gives us this analogy that. Cheating is kind of like a diet. (laughs) Like, what? And she goes on to explain how, unlike dieting, in a marriage or in a committed partnership, you need to always aspire, always aspire to getting it right. Unlike a diet where eh, you can cheat some of the time. Take a listen to what she said. Let's say we talk about balanced diets, right? You're allowed to do like that 80-20. Like you are good during the week, whatever you eat, like you don't eat your carbs during the week. But then on the weekend, you could have a little cake oh my, and I'm hopefully somebody didn't like secretly this. put the cake in your apartment. <laughs> but what's what's difficult is you can't do that for every area of your life. And there's many areas you can't really do that. Like you shouldn't be a good parent only 80% of the time. You know, you should try, you should aspire to higher percentages. And I feel like marriage is like that. We all wish it could be, well, not everyone, but some people may wish it could be 80-20. But in fact, that 20 spoils the 80 much more than, you know, in a diet. And now a word from our sponsor. I love Nutrafol because who doesn't love having beautiful hair? Ever since I've started taking these supplements, I've already started to see much more beautiful, lustrous hair. And what woman doesn't feel better when her hair looks better? Nutrafol offers two targeted formulas for women that are clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding. Growing healthier hair takes time, though. You'll begin to experience your thicker, stronger, faster-growing hair in as few as three to six months. I know that since I've been taking it, I've already seen a difference, and it's only been about two and a half, maybe three months. And I'm not alone because in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after just six months. So you can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show 
by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code CHEATING to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is the best offer anywhere, and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, you get free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N U T R A F O L dot com, promo code cheating. That's N U T R A F O L dot com, promo code cheating. Episode 9 My Girlfriend Cheated on Me with Her Dog. That's the title of Episode 9. Sounds crazy. But John is a really great, smart, super smart guy, really bright, really a different way of thinking. So I loved having him on, but he talked about how he experienced emotional alienation because the women he was involved with loved their pets more than him. I was like, come on, you got to be kidding me. But it's really interesting, his perspective, particularly because it was the year of the pandemic and people were hunkered down and really isolated in many times alone with their pets. And so he talks about how he doesn't want to be involved with women that have pets. He was that hurt by these experiences. But before we got to that, the great pet debate, he talked about a girlfriend of his, why she was so involved with her pet and why he believed that she relied so much upon her dog. And it was because her husband, his girlfriend was previously married, apparently cheated on her at the wedding. I don't know if you remember, we talked about Brad and how he, in episode one, you know, got jerked off on his honeymoon. But now we're talking about somebody who apparently had an affair and continued the affair with this lover, although he had a fiancé and was getting married and disappeared, gone for hours, during the wedding, doing what? John shares this story with us. I dated a girl who had come out of a really bad relationship. Uh, I shouldn't say really a bad relationship, but... It ended uh, really horribly. What happened? So she was uh, she was dating somebody for four years, and uh, ultimately uh, decided to get engaged. Mm-hmm. And during the engagement, there were suspicions that he was having a relationship outside of theirs. And how did and- she? discover that or what made her be suspect? You know, I, I think it's probably the rumblings of, of the, the change in, in patterns and behavior mm-hmm. and then some of the rumblings that you hear through word of mouth, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in your circle of friends. And then uh, they eventually still moved forward and, and got married. And uh, that eventually uh, led to, uh, at, at her wedding night, apparently her mm-hmm. now husband at that time okay. uh, had brought the person as a guest because it turned out to be a coworker. Oh, and, God. Now, yeah. did she, when when the guest was invited, did the bride know more or less? Is that what you're saying? She had a suspicion at that point? Yeah, not definitively, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. I don't know what his story was or how he kind of like diffracted it, but it was... But she agreed to invite this woman. Yeah. I mean, it was his his guest and it was, mm-hmm. you know, he had some coworkers there, I guess. And, uh, you know, ultimately at the reception, she couldn't find him actually for a couple of hours. And right. then, uh, you know, the suspicions kind of came to fruition. And then uh, shortly after that... Wait, what they, do you mean the suspicions came to fruition? I think she knew he was gone for a couple of hours because he was... he. <laughs> chose to cheat on her at their wedding reception, which is horrible. Which is, so how do you even do that? So, I mean, you've got the pictures, you've got the ceremony, you've got your family. How did he even get away? Uh, well, trust me, when by the time I came around to dating her, the, I, after hearing, you know, the, the history of this, and, and she's very open about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I give her a lot of credit because she's come to terms with it. And mm-hmm. But I mean, first instinct that I had, I was like, I wish I could run into this guy just to crack him in the face because, yeah, it's like, what are you thinking? If you felt that way, then why'd you even go through with the engagement, let alone the marriage? Correct. And then four weeks after they were married. But wait, let's go back to this because I just want to go back to this wedding night. So Mm -hmm. he disappears. He's, I guess, in the 
hotel room where the bridal suite with the woman or wh- where is this occurring? How did she know it happened for a fact? Uh, I, I don't know if, if this is 100 percent a fact. I think ah. what, what ended up happening because she was couldn't find them. Uh, I think everything all through deduction, all the, the, the all the indicators were there that he ducked out. Uh, because she wasn't there during the course of the couple of hours either. So uh, I don't know the details, where it happened, what what went down. But as she described it to me when we were talking about it, when we were dating, and uh-huh. this was you know, a couple of years after it yeah. happened, that yeah. she's like, yeah, it definitely happened. And then uh, – for- And how did she – deal with it on that night. Oh, she was in tears. I mean, she was very upset and she tried to keep her composure because her friends and family were there and uh, Did she confront him that night or no. she swept Oh, no. Not swept. from what not from what I hear and then, you know, after they the reception was over, she was telling me like they didn't even sleep together. Um that Well, thank that God night. for that. Yeah. So, you know, it, all the indicators were there and then uh, it just culminated he ended up leaving her 4 weeks after they got married. Episode 17, Adam Carolla on cheating and affairs. I was so excited to have Adam. He's such a great storyteller. He's hilarious. He's got this great dry humor. And he always has a way of equating a circumstance to some sort of story that's going to illustrate exactly the point he's trying to make. And he's so effective of doing that. So we were talking about what can threaten a relationship. You know, you're in a relationship, you're committed, you're monogamous, everything's going along swimmingly until, up ah, something happens that can cause you to question just how secure your relationship is. So in this piece coming up, Adam and I become partners in a relationship for all of a minute and a half as he so brilliantly and hilariously describes something that could threaten a relationship, something so significant, something so important that could make anyone, even the most monogamous and committed of partners, question whether or not they really want to stay together. Here's what he said. Well, let's just say you and I are in a relationship and uh, let's just make ourselves uh, 30 yeah, and, I like not, it. and not marry. <laughs> okay. You don't want me to go up to 67? I'm, I'm 30. You're, you're 38. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's 30. Our, <laughs> okay. th- our 30s. We're having this relationship, right? Okay. Now, and I'm a, I'm a carpenter. Okay. And, um, you know, like I was in my old life, I'm driving my pickup truck and I'm, you know, making 18 bucks an hour. What am I? And. You're, uh, you know, you're a school teacher. Okay. You're doing okay. I'm doing okay. You know, we both make 47 grand a year. Okay. And you're, uh, you're attractive as you are. Oh, thank you. And you go out and, and you're having affairs on me. Okay. Right. And, and I'm aware of it. Yes. Uh, but maybe I'm not squeezing the trigger on getting out of the relationship because I got a pickup truck. I'm swinging a hammer for a living. <laughs> right. You're pretty, you're attractive. You know, a, am I going to do? Well, let's just say the following day, I win the lottery and win $100 million. I'm never giving you a divorce. <laughs> uh, we're not you're married. Going, oh, I should have married you in the beginning. The point is this. How many people, male or female, with the cheating partner if yeah. they hit that lottery for a hundred million bucks wouldn't be gone the next day next and day the next minute all right next minute <laughs> so the answer is all of them and now a word from our sponsor how many of you wish there was a better solution to paying off your debt our sponsors pds debt has customized zero interest options for anyone struggling with credit cards personal loans medical bills collections or any other type of debt Because of the tough year from COVID-19, certain types of debt can now be reduced and in some cases completely eliminated from your credit. There are now more options than ever before to take control of your debt, and the experts at PDS Debt can help. PDS Debt is giving our listeners a free debt analysis and copy of their credit report just for completing the 30-second online debt assessment at pdsdebt.com. Slash cheating. You'll receive a full breakdown of all the interest you shouldn't be paying each month and multiple options on how they can help you get rid of it. Everyone with over $5,000 in debt qualifies, and there's no minimum credit score required. 
bad and fair credit are all accepted. Pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. PDS Debt is offering free credit reports to our listeners just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at www.pdsdebt.com slash cheating. That's P-D-S-D-E-B-T dot com slash cheating. Take back your financial freedom today by visiting pdsdebt.com slash cheating. Adam Carolla, and that way he has of finding examples in your everyday life that bring to light some sort of conundrum that you just can't seem to figure out. I don't know how he does it, but he's really, really good at it. So in this next clip, Adam and I are talking about when and under what circumstance someone may decide to cheat. And he sets up this whole scenario of this couple that's like living together and what might incite them to say, you know what, I, I, I'm an, a monogamous person and I love you, but I got to take a walk on the other side, the wild side, because being in this monogamous relationship with you is just too much. Now, Adam is not advocating cheating in the real world, nor am I, but this example that he gives here of a couple that could so easily be tempted by circumstances that would lead them to desire to cheat really crystallized with me. And I said, and he said, we were both like, yeah, I think in that circumstance, both the man and the woman could decide, yeah, we're going to opt for the cheating option because it's better than staying in the present situation of monogamy that we're currently in. And here's how he put it in that very Adam Carolla way. If you said to most people, I'm going to give you a choice. You can have a husband and or wife, just two way street of the yeah. person being a little lethargic, being a little depressed, maybe mm. has a habit or two you're not mm. quite fond of, maybe likes to go smoke mm. cigarettes out on the patio at night before he goes to bed, or mm. maybe they drink a little, or maybe mm. it's a little, he's a little too into his rotisserie baseball league, spends a lot of time, mm. you know, drafting fairy tale players and putting them on a fake team, you know, whatever, yeah. distracted, like okay. this, watches a little too much porn on the internet. Oh, you know, God, wh- now you lost me. Okay. <laughs> whatever that thing is, you know, maybe she, she doesn't, you know, I come home off after a long day's work. She's in her bathrobe watching TV. There's no dinner. There's no nothing. The kitchen's a mess. She's not working. You know, I, she's not being financially responsible, like whatever it is. You mm-hmm. have all that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if you said that can be your relationship with no cheating, Mm -hmm. just that, Mm -hmm. or would you like to have the person that is energetic, is responsible, Mm -hmm. is whatever, but they cheated once or twice or whatever? Mm -hmm. What would you take? I think a lot of people take the cheater. What would you take? I, I would take the cheater in that scenario because one is like an earthquake and the other is like right. air pollution. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> earthquake, it, it can be devastating, but you can put it right. back together. Yeah. Air pollution's just there, man. Episode 13, Dangerous Liaisons, When Cheating Leads to Tragic Ends. This was my interview with famed attorney Marilyn B. Chinitz of Blank Rome Law Firm in New York City. Marilyn is the top of the top. Her clients include Tom Cruise and Wendy Williams and Michael Douglas. So this is the best of the best. And Marilyn is a great storyteller, and she tells two really tragic stories about affairs that ended very, very badly. One in a murder and the other in an almost incarceration that was not deserved. And were it not for Marilyn, this person would have ended up in prison for a very, very long time. So Marilyn shared dangerous liaisons that have tragic and or potentially tragic ends. But Marilyn is also extraordinarily insightful. She's brilliant and she has the depth of experience to share 
the one thing that she esteems is the most important for anyone who suspects that their spouse or partner could be cheating. And she talks about how we all possess this one thing, and it's the most important thing that we need to pay attention to. I think most people do have good instinct. I think there are so many telltale signs that your spouse is having an affair. Like what? All of a sudden, someone is dropping an enormous amount of weight. Yes. All of a sudden, <laughs> yes. they're buying incredible clothing. Yes. Um, you see a change in, in how they have sex with you. You see variances that clearly there's a reason for that change. There's a reason why. Is it all of a sudden that, you know, wow, I realized I'm, you know, 30 pounds overweight and I right. want to lose weight? Mm-hmm. There tends to be connectors and you need to connect the diet dots And good instinct allows you to see something is not really right. Not that you have to view it with a jaundiced eye or negatively, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you have to say, okay, this requires further inquiry. And what should that inquiry inquiry entail? What's the first step? Do you go to your husband or partner or wife and say... You know, I had a client who threw her phone into the backseat of the husband's car So she was able to track everywhere he went. Oh, boy. There are so many different techniques that that I am aware of. That was brilliant. Um, uh, So confronting is not going to help you. People can lie right in your face, and they could be convincing, and you're not going to get anywhere. Hmm. Um, But there are so many different ways to uncover whether or not your spouse is cheating. And now, a word from our sponsor. How many of you wish there was a better solution to paying off your debt? Our sponsors, PDS Debt, has customized zero-interest options for anyone struggling with credit cards, personal loans, medical bills, collections, or any other type of debt. Because of the tough year from COVID-19, certain types of debt can now be reduced and in some cases completely eliminated from your credit. There are now more options than ever before to take control of your debt, and the experts at PDS Debt can help. PDS Debt is giving our listeners a free debt analysis and copy of their credit report just for completing the 30-second online debt assessment at pdsdebt.com slash cheating. You'll receive a full breakdown of all the interest you shouldn't be paying each month and multiple options on how they can help you get rid of it. Everyone with over $5,000 in debt qualifies, and there's no minimum credit score required. Bad and fair credit are all accepted. Pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. PDS Debt is offering free credit reports to our listeners just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at www.pdsdebt.com slash cheating. That's P D S D E B T dot com slash cheating. Take back your financial freedom today by visiting pdsdebt dot com slash cheating. Episode 13 Dangerous Liaisons When Cheating Leads to Tragic Ends. So I asked Marilyn, in her experience as an attorney dealing with very, very high profile divorces, how often the affair is part of the divorce? And she said, well, you know, very often an affair does come into play. And then I asked her, is it always bad? Are all affairs categorically wrong and bad? And she referenced Esther Perel, one of my favorites. Of course, Esther originated the whole discussion on cheating and affairs many, many years ago. And we both referenced her work in understanding that an affair can at times help a marriage or a partnership. Sounds counterintuitive, but Marilyn in this next clip talks about how if you can see the affair as an opportunity and or learn from the affair and help your relationship to grow, it can actually be something positive in a relationship. Here's what she had to say. Would you say that affairs are categorically wrong? You know, if you talk to some therapist, Esther Perel, yes, I um, love her. she will tell you, I love her too. Love She'll her. say, Fair, affairs are not terrible. 
They can actually strengthen the marriage. Mm -hmm. They can actually enhance. You can rediscover your relationship and Mm -hmm. your partner. Mm -hmm. And there's a positive uh, effect. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I'm I'm reminded of of Hillary Clinton. People were actually angry with her that she didn't leave Bill Clinton. Oh, yes. And many women I know. Right. Yes. And... and, um, I think that if you are not happy in your marriage, take a hiatus. You may want to take, a, a, you know, a time to separate and mm-hmm. explore. Mm-hmm. But I think when Why you, don't people do that, Marilyn? Uh, because it's, there's too many consequences. Yes. Um, I because agree. things can unravel as a result of that exploration. Mm-hmm. And I don't think people necessarily go into an affair saying, oh, I'm going to have an affair. I think it's a natural progression. progression. And it's a question of whether or not you are able to put the brakes on or whether you lift your foot off the pedal and it just takes off. Episode 13, Dangerous Liaisons. So here's where Marilyn and I totally agree. Now, Marilyn talks very specifically in this next piece about how you can't trust just going on Google and going on LinkedIn and trying to figure it out for yourself who this person is that you're thinking about having an affair with. Let me just Google and LinkedIn and find out everything I need to know about this person. No, 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 says Marilyn. That's not enough. And I so agree with her on this because we all know online you can be whoever you want to be. You can write whatever you want. You can portray whatever you want. And unless there's someone to verify the information that's online, you really can't be sure what it is you're getting for the good or the bad. So Marilyn goes on in this next clip coming up to really discuss why you need to know more than just what you can Google. And how do you do that? You go to the ex-partner. And in this case, it was the ex-wife. I've always been a fan of that. If you want to know with whom you're dealing, you ask the people around you. You ask the person who's maybe dealt with them in a romantic capacity. So when you were with them, tell me a little bit about what went on. Is that a betrayal? Is it wrong? I don't think so, especially when you suspect that the person is acting nefariously toward you. Why wouldn't you go to the source? Why wouldn't you pick up the phone if you're involved with someone? You think that they're lying to you and say, well, you know what? Let me ask the person that was previously involved with them. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because it's a big debate. I had one friend. That was the first thing she'd do. She'd be like, well, I'm going out with this guy. The first person I'm going to call is the ex-girlfriend and find out what he's really all about. And if the ex-girlfriend doesn't want to talk to me, well, then maybe there's something that she doesn't want me to know or that he's trying to hide. I think it's a valid source of information. Marilyn agrees with me, and I'd love for you to hear her point of view on that. You're walking into a very dangerous zone because right now, although we can get so much information from Google and we can do our search, and that's great, and you have to do that. Okay. You don't really always know the details of someone's inner life. You know, I always say, if you want to know about... um, the man that you're going to marry, speak to his ex-wife, ex-wife, right? Right. Because she'll give you those dark secrets. But people can make terrible mistakes. I represented one father. Um, his wife was having a relationship with a man, very good looking, appeared to be very credentialed, very successful. Mm-hmm. We did some investigation and he was arrested for pedophilia. He was oh. a he Good. was really a sick guy. Oh, and God. my my client's son was living oh. with the mother and this man. Oh. And he lived, we found out through investigation, he lived in D.C. across the street from a school. Oh. And Isn't that illegal? Well, he had not been And, and he would lift yet. up when the kids had recess mm. and they were playing mm. and they were mm. walking on the sidewalks. He would lift up mm. his curtain and show himself and uh, mm. all kinds of explicit really uh, offensive, disgusting behavior. Mm. She, the mother, was unwilling to even look at what we had found until finally we ended up trying the case um, and we got the evidence of his arrest. You said that the mother of the child living in the house with the the pedophile. pedophile was unwilling to believe. She would not believe what my client was telling her. We had to get all of the records, get everything 
into evidence to prove that this guy was really dangerous. So the, the, the point is this. Unless you know people who know this individual, you've got to be really careful who you're going to engage in a relationship with. And Googling and LinkedIn and all that you don't feel is enough. You know, I, I know so many people who are so well credentialed and they're smart and they're very successful, but they're really twisted. Yeah. Or dangerous. Um, both. Hmm. And you wouldn't know that necessarily. By going online and searching. No, but if you speak to people who do, you know, know that person, um, they may be the best source of information. Mm -hmm. Proceed with caution is what my, my thought is. And now, a word from our sponsor. I'm Brett. And I'm Alice. And together we host a weekly true crime podcast called The Prosecutors. In every episode, we bring our unique perspective as full-time prosecutors to the most famous and debated true crime mysteries. Whether it's Maura Murray, Scott Peterson, or the Delphi murders, Brett and I dig deep to bring you details you won't hear anywhere else. Our podcast is about more than just a story. We will walk you through the legal problems lurking behind every case, breaking down the complexities of the criminal justice system with humor and a personal touch. And it's not just true crime. We bring the same training and approach we've learned as prosecutors to classic mysteries like the Dyatlov Pass incident and the ghost ship Mary Celeste. So if you're looking for a true crime podcast with a different point of view, The Prosecutors is the one for you. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 12, How Celebrities, Billionaires, and Legends Cheat. My interview with Mark Simone. Mark's a big shot. He's got a number one radio show in New York and he's been around forever and he knows everybody and you see him in every like tabloid with the big fancy people. So I had Mark come in because I wanted to get the inside scoop. No names, no names. We're not outing anybody, but I wanted to get the inside view on situations of affairs and cheating that happened among the billionaires. He even went to zillionaires. I was like, dude, I've never met a zillionaire. <laughs> like, I'm still stuck on the billionaires here. But how they do the affair. So he shares some really fascinating stories. But this particular story that Mark shared was about rock stars. I don't know who this rock star is that he was talking about. I shouldn't assume it was rock. See, that was a, a stereotyping on my part. But it's a musician, very well-known big shot guy. And Mark shares with us the story of how he had pickers, people that would identify women for this guy to sleep with. I mean, it's incredible. Listen to what happens behind the scenes with celebrities and cheating. There's one star who, who so go nameless. He had the best guy I ever saw. This guy was so organized. He had the spreadsheet. Picker. The picker upper and the, the organizer. He had spreadsheets, charts, and uh, what do you, what's on the spreadsheet and the chart? Well, this guy had so many women. You know, when you're talking 100, 200, 300, whatever. Yeah. There's going to be a bunch of Lauras. So there was Laura one, Laura two, Laura three. There oh, were Susan six, goodness. Susan eight, Susan. But why would he, he have to keep track? I'm presuming he's not repeating. If he's doing 300, he won't. But let's go back to Laura two. Oh no, they repeat all the time. You know, he'll say they after repeat the, show, the women. Oh, yeah. After the show, uh, set up something with Susan for uh, 11 and then Laura, two at uh, midnight. Really? And then uh, you'd get there and he'd take the guy's say, that's not Laura, two. Laura, two is the blonde. And he said, no, you're wrong. That's Laura, three. Look, I got it right down. here. Here's the notes. And oh. they, I mean, they couldn't keep track of all these women. How horrible. You know, I mean, we're laughing <laughs> because it's it's ludicrous. Right. But I mean, for these women, what's your thought on how these women or probably more like not so girls, you know, not so mature. What's your thought on them? I mean, do they feel taken advantage of, you think? Well, you can't argue they're taken advantage of because... Uh, I'm not arguing, I'm asking. Well, I mean, the celebrity doesn't have subpoena power. They're their, their own mm -hmm. will. Uh, and they, they, they kind of know when this guy comes into the audience or wherever and brings her backstage. That they kind of know what's going on. And when he mm -hmm. says, let's get together and uh, you know, but if you're a big star, they get starstruck. They want to be around you. Mark is a great storyteller. In this next piece, Mark gives us behind the scenes view of what a billionaire is like when he's cheating. Okay. I'm thinking a mistress or two. All right. He's got a lot of money, maybe three. 
He's telling me about full boatloads, and I mean it. Boat. Full of mistresses, lovers, women, that follows his own yacht as he's vacationing. Things I couldn't even fathom or imagine. And Mark, like I said, is such a great storyteller. He shares with us these stories of how the billionaires and zillionaires are affairing. And here's what he had to say. There was one guy, he's a well-known guy, but he's no longer with us, but I can't mention his name. But, no names, uh, no names. Uh, he had a place, a uh, weekend place, nothing to do with the wife, but okay. uh, sometimes I'd meet him up there and he had a woman staying with him there and uh, the girlfriend for, for that place. And then uh, we'd leave in the morning, but he'd meet his wife at the country club in uh, Westchester for lunch. And I'd come to that. And then after that was all over, he'd head into the city for dinner with the girlfriend, the city girlfriend. This stuff goes on all the time. Did the country girlfriend know there was a city girlfriend? Uh, No, they may have suspected it. Uh, One day there was a huge uh, gala dinner in the Waldorf ballroom. And this guy, big guy, he'd buy four or five tables at this Mm. event. And uh, he'd have different women at each table. And I'd say, what the hell are you doing? This is not, he said, well, you sit with them. You act like she's with you. And then I got somebody else acting like that. And uh, this would go on all the time. I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, I'll just keep moving from table to table. One won't know about the other. And what this about worked the all the time. Well, Is one time it didn't work because they put the tables too close to each other. And uh, all of them figured out what was going on. So, <gasps> And how did they respond? Or I should say react? Uh, well, for this, whether it was five of them, I think he probably yeah. lost four of them that night. One stayed maybe. Did they make a now, scene or did they go quietly? A little of both. <laughs> but, what was the uh, scene like? Pulling him aside or screaming in the ballroom? What happened? Yes, yelling and screaming. But luckily by then the band has started playing and was <laughs> dancing and live music and nobody could hear anything. But, you know, I, I don't know if you know this, but every billionaire is zillionaire. Uh, I don't know any zillionaires. That, well, you see they've <laughs> got this yacht, uh, this enormous, like a yeah. yacht like you've never seen. And they're taking the entire family, all the relatives, all yeah. their friends, 30, 40, they're going to cruise. Yeah. Yeah. wherever for the whole month of August. Yes. Now, in almost every case, this guy has a second boat that is a mile or two behind the main boat. And on that boat, he's got lots of uh, women, girlfriends, mistresses, all that stuff. How many of these situations do you know? One, five, ten. You're making it sound like this is just rampant. I could think of about 25 cases. No. Where there's a yacht with a boat. That with and another women. boat behind at night, he'll sneak off his boat and get to that boat. And you know what's interesting? I was watching the new season of Billions, which is about a hedge fund billionaire. Yes, yes. And he yes. actually threw that into one of his rants where he's yelling at the wife about uh, all the they, they're getting divorced. And he said, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. He goes, I never had the second boat behind us like all my friends do. Oh, so, so it is that common. Yeah, it's that common. And if you uh, if the billionaire goes to London and takes the family, everybody is friends, 30 people, and they're all yeah. staying at the Dorchester. Yes. Uh, yeah. Two blocks away at the Grosvenor house, he's probably got 10, 12 women in different rooms, and he can run over there at night. That goes on all the time. That's just disheartening. Well, How does he <laughs> feel about it? Did you ever say to him, dude, it's impossible that you can find gratification from all these women. Like, first of all, how does he have the time? Well, I guess when you're a zillionaire, a billionaire, everyone's doing stuff for you. I guess. I don't know. Well, those but, guys don't sleep and they can run 27 businesses as, as, at once. And that's right. With the help do. of very talented people. But how do they feel? Like, isn't it just kind of gross after a while? Is there not like well, a gross quotient? Don't get mad, but I see them when they come back and they look like they feel great. They, they look like they had a great time. Thank you for listening to Cheating When Love Lies. Please continue to rate, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcast. And you can always reach me at JillianHamilton.online. I love to hear from you. See you next time.